Three Sons. Starring Fred McMurray. And as Uncle Charlie, William Demarest. No wonder she's pooped. Polly, honey, I think the car's fixed. We better get going. I must have fallen asleep. You had a right to, honey. You kids really married. You look like you should be going to a history class or something. Well, we still go to school, but we really are married. It's our marriage license, see? Yes. You look great. Man, I'm afraid to ask him how much he's going to charge us. It's for real, all right. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. How much do we owe you? Well, let's see. Parts, labor. How does ten bucks strike you? Ten bucks? Well. I happen to have the parts around here. Uh, old junk I've been trying to get rid of. Why, you've done me a favor taking it off my hand. It's a wedding present, Chip, isn't it? Well, I got a little gal at the house like you. Of course, she's a little bit younger than you are, but... Well, anyway, she's in a spot like this. I... Oh, I... <laughs> How can you call it a wedding present when I'm charging you 10 bucks for it? Well, you kids better get going. You got a long drive ahead of you, Mexico. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. I wonder where they are now. Well, the way I figure it, they should just about be getting to Mexico. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Chip Douglas. How does it feel to have another married son? Well, I guess I should be getting used to it by now, but uh, somehow it's different with Chip. Honey, tell me what he was like when he was little. Well, of course, he had some bad moments, but uh, he was a pretty good boy. Oh, I'm sure he was. It's hard for me to consider him grown up, let alone married. Why? Because he's so young? No, no, I was... I was just remembering his first encounter with a girl. It was a disaster. <laughs> what was her name? Uh, Doris... Dora... Dory. Doreen... Uh, I can't remember her last name, but anyway, she called Chip up on the phone. And his brothers were really giving him a bad time. Wait a minute. Chip, uh, who was the girl on the phone just now? Nobody. What do you mean, nobody? She must have a name. That dumb Doreen Peters. Doreen Peters, huh? You were sort of rude to her on the phone. What's the matter? Don't you like her? If she were a bug, it sure would be fun to step on her. What did she do? Beat you out of something or throw you out at first base or what? Worse than that, she she hangs around all the time, makes goof eyes at me. Goof eyes? Yeah, every time I turn around, she's looking straight at me with her clunky old eye. What do you mean? Like this. Goof eyes. Well, Chip, I think you ought to feel flattered. Sounds like this girl has a crush on you. No, she hasn't. She's in love with me. Don't she tell you that? Sure, she tells everybody. Last Valentine's Day, everybody gave each other a nickel valentine. And she gave me a 50-cent one. Greater love hath no woman. Huh? Oh, nothing. I can see you have a problem, Chip. She probably get embarrassed when she does these things in front of your friends. The guys call me Hot Lips Douglas. Hot Lips Douglas? <laughs> Well, I don't think this is any reason to be unkind to Doreen. Yeah, but who wants to get married in the second grade? Well, she wants to get married, huh? Sure, if I hadn't kicked her in the knee a couple of times, we would have been married in the first grade. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Peters announced the marriage of their daughter, Goof Eyes, to Hot Lips Douglas. Hot 
Well, I wonder where Hot Lips Douglas and his wife are now. Well, I imagine they're uh, somewhere below the border. Chip? Andale, Angelita. Hi. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Hay palde en el motor. Get out the phrase book, honey. <laughs> Look up, Falta. I took three years of Spanish in high school. Only right now, I'm nervous. Falta, mistake or wrong? Oh, yes, there's something's wrong with the motor. Uh, no, no tenemos gasolina. Ah, uh, hay gasolina muy lejos. I hope lejos doesn't mean far away. If it does, we're in big trouble. <laughs> Lejos, distant, far away. We're in big trouble. <laughs> well, here we are. There's the Luna de Miel. Oh, it's just wonderful. Thank you for all your help, Paco. She says muchas gracias, Paco. Here's a little something for you. No, cheap. Somos amigos, ¿verdad? Amigos, sí. Pues, hasta luego. Buena suerte y vayan con Dios. What a wonderful man. Dad said it was real friendly around here. The whole place is just for couples on their honeymoons. I think from now on, everything's going to be okay. Come on. Can we leave the car here? Well, Dad said to ask for Peppy, and he'd take care of everything. You like it? I love it. And I think you're right. Everything's going to be okay from now on. Come on. Is it true? Holly, Chip, hello? Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, you ought to have a broadcasting license. <laughs> well, if it was up to you, nobody would ever find out anything. <laughs> Were they trying to keep it a secret? No, as a matter of fact, Barbara tried to call you kids and tell you, but, uh, well, you weren't home. Then it is true. It isn't what you'd call a classical elopement. Uh, I mean, Chip talked to me about it, and Polly's mother gave her permission. Oh, well, then they must have eloped because of Polly's father. Yeah, old Poison Pete. <laughs> Chip married my little brother. Dad, you remember when you tried to tell him about the birds and the bees? Oh, yeah. Well, that was uh, pretty much of a fiasco. What happened? Well, Chip was very young, and he thought Jellybean Snyder found her puppies in a trash can. Remember, uh, yeah. Jellybean Snyder? Yeah, it was the neighbor's dog. And Chip thought that you got baby goats from under bridges. Dad had to talk to him. I don't think he uh, really understood what I was trying to tell him. Well, he's had a couple of years to figure things out. <laughs> Man. Man what? It just wasn't that long ago. Was it that? Well, I guess it must have been, Rob. Chip is now a married man on his honeymoon in Puerto Munoz. My name is Douglas. Oh, fine. Fine. You will sign here, please. My father told us about this place. Oh, he say nice things? Oh, yes. He and Chip's mother just loved it here. Oh, these are welcome words, senorita. You will sign here, por favor. I sign for both of us. Oh, no, senor. No, you see, here everybody must sign to himself. Miguelito, el senor cuarto uno tres tres y la señorita cuarto dos zero uno. Hey, wait a minute. We don't want separate rooms. We're married. Oh, but senor, this is now a singles hotel. <laughs> singles? Si. You have not heard of singles? Well, sure, we've heard of singles, but we're married. And besides, my dad told us this was a honeymoon hotel. You even had a sign up. Oh, for... I could change that sign as soon as our new policy is permanente. You see, senor, we are Eddie Martin. Do they know people like to arrive as singles than as honeymooners? In this place, we have the rooms on the left for the senoritas and the rooms on the right for the hombres. We find this to be a good arrangement. Any other hotels around here? 
Honey, if I don't get some sleep pretty soon, I'm going to collapse right here on the floor. Okay, honey. Bye. My son, he can eat those if your suitcases in your... Oh, hi. That's right. They told me I had a roommate. I'm Mike Wiggins. I'm Chip Douglas. This place is really heavy. Yeah, it sure is. You know, they told me this used to be a honeymoon hotel. Yeah. This is a better deal. I met a girl tonight who would knock your hat off. She had long brown hair and satiny skin and brown eyes. And we danced till a little while ago over at the Concha Azul. Did you ever hear of it? Yeah, my dad was here. He told me. She's from Philadelphia. Who? Well, the girl that I met. By the way, she's got a sister. You want me to set you up with her? No. That's okay. Okay. you came home. I just have to talk to somebody. I'm Polly Williams. Douglas. My husband and I were just married last night. Well, our car broke down. And it rained. And well, we walked for miles. When we got to the station, well, there's nobody there could fix the car until the next day. And then we ran out of gas. We pulled here by a donkey. And now we find out that this is a singles hotel. This is my wedding night. Have you ever heard of anything so awful in your life? Lo siento, pero no hablo ninguna palabra de inglés. You don't speak English. No. Oh. Llores, chica. Llores. Did you sleep okay? No. Did you? No. Oh, I tell to you what I do. I break the rule. A break what rule? About single. In between the rooms for the senoritas and the rooms for the boys, there is a, oh, como se dice, a parlor, no? I guess I didn't notice. Chance it is to separate the rooms from the boys and the rooms from the girls. Tonight I will make from this parlor one extra room for you. Oh, you are married. You must be together. And when you leave, I make it the parlor again. Oh, man, thanks, Pepe. Oh, you're very nice, senor. Of course. Now, for breakfast, you will require uh, anything. Eggs, I guess. Eggs. Bueno. And because you are North Americanos, very little hot sauce. <laughs> are you sorry you married me? Man, Polly, quit saying that kind of stuff. No, I mean it. I mean, have you ever seen so many disasters? It's like my dad bought a Polly doll and stuck pins in it. I talked to my mom on the phone. She said your dad took it okay. I hope I didn't hurt him too much. Heck no. He'll get used to the idea. Ah! Oh, do you like the walk on the beach, eh, she? It was great. Oh, she, I have not yet entirely prepared for you your room. You the guy in charge here? Si, senor. Well, I like your best room for me and my wife. Senor, this is a singles hotel. Singles? But we're married. Oh, I'm sorry, senor, but we now have the new rules. And I saw your ad in a travel magazine. It said Honeymoon Hotel. Oh, senor, that was a year old. And we've traveled hundreds of miles to get here. Uh, you see, we've been married for a few years, and um, well, we saw you and decided to come to a honeymoon atmosphere to kind of patch up. It's kind of a second honeymoon. I'm sure the man doesn't want to hear the story of our Sorry, life, Ruth. Are uh, you telling me that nobody around here is married? We, we are. are. Well, there. Uh, Senor, 
I made the exception in this case only. If you can make one exception, you can make two. Now, where do we sign? This way, senor. Darling, I wish you'd forget you're a lawyer and stop patronizing people. I got us the room, didn't I? Promise me something. Okay. Stay like your father. Okay, I'll try. Isn't it weird, honey? What? Hang your clothes in the same closet. We'd better. It's the only closet. Chip, you're about as romantic as a fish. I'm as romantic as the next guy. Only I don't know all the words. Just say, Polly Douglas, the light of day blushes in your presence. The sun pales in your brilliance. The moon basks in the reflected glory of your smile. You know, if I had to say stuff like that, I'd choke. <laughs> Where'd you learn it? English lit. Yeah. Well, while you were learning that, I was in Woodshop making an end table. <laughs> it tastes good. Will that do? Byron would have said it better. But I bet he was rotten at making end tables. <laughs> On my wash up. See ya. Tell me how the moments will move like a glacier till you see my face again. <laughs> yeah, like you said. <laughs> down the whole bathroom, I'd have gone back home. Yeah. How long have you been married? And not very long. We're on our honeymoon. Enjoy it while you can. How come? I've been married four years. Four. And out of those four years, I'd say I had maybe six good months. Hey, wow. Right. I'm not saying it's Ruth's fault. Not all of it, anyway. A lot of it's mine, but we just got married too young. Well, how old were you? Twenty. <laughs> Forget I ever said anything. Uh, but what happened? <sighs> Who knows? I'm no philosopher. But adding up the pluses and minuses, my advice to you would be to run for the hills before it's too late. Run for the hills? Yeah. Flee for your life, man. Because once you settle down, then the arguments start. And the, the misunderstandings and the selfishness. Whew. I make a lot of money now. You know why? Because I couldn't stand to stay home and argue. I went out and I worked. And I made a bundle. And Ruth and I share nothing except a bank account. Don't you love her? I don't know why I dragged that word into it. I mean, who has time to find out? Well, wouldn't you miss her if she were gone? I mean, well, suppose you got in an accident or something and you didn't have her anymore. I don't have that kind of luck. My dad says every time he gets hacked at somebody in the family, he wonders what it would be like if they weren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. That may be fine for you and your dad. Now with me, run for the hills. But why should that older man make such an impression on you? He's not that much older. And he said that out of four years of marriage, he's only been happy about six months. Sure, but he doesn't have a wife like me. What else did he say? He said that he was too young to get married, and he was 20. Man. You're afraid you've wrecked my life, is that it? Maybe I'm not doing it any good. Maybe your dad was right. Here we are married. We only got our driver's license two years ago. Chip. Yeah? Did it ever occur to you that maybe he was just plain wrong? You're right. He's just plain wrong. Why you did not tell to me that you are the son of Senor Douglas? I thought I did. 
Oh, perhaps, but my head did not receive the message. Only now, when this champagne arrived with a note from your papa, do I know. What does the note say, Pepe? He say, dear Pepe, tell my son and my daughter-in-law that we hope they will be as happy in your hotel as we were a year ago. Oh, she... I feel this, and tonight I bring to the Concha Azul. And you, she... You will dance with your pride. Thank you, Pepe. De nada. Uh. There he is, the teenage philosopher. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Some thanks for an order. You know, I'd like to call you something else besides kids. We're not that much older than you are. This is my wife, Polly, and I'm Chip Douglas. Hi. You know, you really started something last night, Chip. I did. Yes, you did more for us last night than you can possibly imagine. You said something in your speech last night that really jarred me. I wish I knew what it was. Well, you were quoting your dad. You said, what would I do if Ruth wasn't around for me to yell at? That finally got through. It was such a simple thing. Yeah, well, it may not change this moth into a butterfly overnight, but I'm going to work at it. Um, would you like to join us for breakfast? That sounds really nice. Pull up a chair. Yeah. Well, my dad sent us a bottle of champagne. Peppy's going to serve it tonight to anybody who's old enough to drink at the Concha Azul. Would you like to join us? That touches me, Chip. That really does. OK, honey? Sure. Do you know something, Miquelito? I think maybe I changed this place back to a honeymoon hotel. Chess. Such things as these are very pleasant. Mm -hmm.